you know, some people say that uh, what, what's reality? And I, I like to tell them that, well, reality uh, could be explained in a metaphorical way, right? Let's take two ordinary glasses. Instead of telling you stories about, you know, uh, express yourself, uh, metaphorical tales of the Wonderland or trying to, you know, illustrate uh, whatever it is, and you go like, what the fuck is he talking about? I'm taking two glasses. And let's say you're put someone inside one glass, and you would probably look out the world through this glass and see, well, this is how the world looks. And if you have someone else putting in so this kind of glass, they will look at the world basically the same way, but not really the same way. And reality is built like this. And when people have a problem, they are inside the glass, they can't get out because the walls are too high. So then you have to turn the world upside down to get out. And if you're able to do that, you can be inside the glass, and then again, you can get, you know, pretty easy to get out. And reality is built in, in, in this way that when you have a context, this is not how we think about the world, but while you're inside the context, you're accustomed or used to have the world in this way. So, what do you do about it then? Uh, because if you don't know the difference, you can't change it or shift it or transform it because you don't know what it's, you know, the baseline is or what it's coming from. So, that happens and then you get into the Wheel of Fortune, as I like to say that you, everything just spins. You, know, you try to get out of the glass, doesn't help because you just, you know, try to climb the glass walls and <laughs> then you get stuck. So how do you get out of the, you know this kind of reality or this kind of context? Well, basically we have to you know transform and shift into a different context. To shift the reality, we need to shift the context. So how do you do that? Well, every system out there, either it's NLP, psychology, or any other technology you're doing, when the change work, you always transform the context of reality the people live in, and all. The contextual reality also has a logic, your own logic. This is how the world is for you. So if you're, you know, uh, having a phobic reaction for snakes, for example, this is how the world looks. When you see a snake or talk about snake, you get fear. That's your contextual reality. You don't know why you react like that because it's enough to talk either about the snake or see the snake or whatever, they freak out. So people then, like, do this thing that they work inside their context in reality, inside the glass, then to fix your phobia. Uh, and most of the times that will not affect anything else in your life. So you don't have this kind of generalization now. So if you get back into the glass here, that when you have language, you distort, uh, you delete, and you generalize. And language is like a glass because it's, it will shift the meaning or reframe the meaning or alter the implication of the fine nuances of the language you're speaking about because that's how language works inside our, you know, logical uh, understanding of the world. Well, once you start to, you know, set a different baseline, like we do in uh, RBIM or, for example, in Middle South or stuff like that, what we're trying to do is to create a, a baseline where your own expression of self, for example, is your know, best experience. So you're coming from a, you know, a baseline of, you know, everything works perfectly for you. Or uh, it's working so in the, in the flow of that stuff. And you can't get out of the glass by sheer willpower or, or you know, I want to get out of it because <clears throat> it will drag you back sooner or later. So you, you need to change the baseline of the context. And the thing here is it works the same way of, as an iconic experience. You don't have an uh, comparison when you have that kind of experience. There is no comparisons going on because this is how it is for you in your life. Uh, I'm afraid to say that's how it is. Or uh, I have anxiety when my kids are in school or uh, I have anxiety when my kids go to a party or uh, I'm worrying about them because something bad is going to happen. And this is how reality is. To get uh, such an individual to get into this kind of, you know, 
feeling <laughs> totally calm and uh, satisfied or whatever you call it. Uh, when these things going on, people have a lot of trouble because they, you know that's not how they operate in the world because that's not how they have learned to respond to the world. And, because as I said earlier, most people respond to the world by events happening outside. So when the things happen outside, people react on the inside. In this uh, day today, it's inside the glass. So some people pour, you know, as I did, I pour some coffee and milk, or in this case, uh, cream in my coffee. So I changed my, you know, my glass a little bit. And, um, for people, some people, this is you know, basically really bad idea to put cream in your coffee because it destroys the coffee. For me, the coffee is much greater now because this is how I enjoy it. This is my cup of coffee, or in this case, cup of glass. So people are different, right? So if you pour a different thing from the outside world inside your own glass of coffee, you will you know, perceive it well different. This is the chain reaction of causality or cause effect or uh, like the Pavlov dogs. The bell rings, it resonates, you respond to that. That's how most people live the world. When everything's going out on the outside world, that's how they respond. If it's cold outside, you know, they start freezing because it's cold outside and they're still indoors. So you imagine that, you know, you see the cold outside, but I can't cry, it's cold, it's not freezing. It's still inside the house. Well, like, isn't it kind of warm inside? Yeah, but on the outside. So that's what people do all the time. And since this becomes synonymous or automatic or chained or anchored, whatever you call it, this is how you perceive the world. So how do you do, what, do you, what, what are we going to do about it? Or what can we do about it? Should we do anything about it? We can talk about the necessity in language and all that stuff. Well, I like to say, well, when is the future when it works? You know, where is it? I mean, well, like, what do you mean, when or where? Well, when is, what is the future when it works for you? And I said, people go like, well, I'm afraid of snake. I know that. I'm, I'm just asking if you, if you weren't afraid, you know, things would be, you know, work differently. They go like, mm -hmm. yeah, probably, but still, I'm still afraid of snake. And I say, yeah, that's fine, but I just want to know how it is when, it, you know, when in reality or context works. When it, well, you know, then I will probably go out the world, you know, and travel a lot and all these countries and all that stuff. And you now I will do all this, you know, thing. And after five, ten minutes, you know, they, they, their experience is totally different. And I go like, how, 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 is, how are things now? And I go like, what? Wow, it's fantastic. And I go, why didn't you come to see me? And they go like, yeah, I don't know. Didn't you have an, a, you know, an issue with snakes? And they go like, snakes? Because the response is not there, because they've changed the context of reality. And people go, wow, that must be magic. Ma you're a magic man, Robert. Oh my God, you're a, you know, absolutely, you know, something like that. And I go like, well, you know, people do this all the time. What, what do you mean all the time? Well, my sister's husband, for example, when he has a lot of stress or, you know, things going on in his life, he goes out in the garage and fix his car or clean the garage or something like that. He just do something, you know. And then he's not stressed anymore. He's just engaged in whatever he likes to do or loves to do. When you do that context, his stress is not existing anymore in that context. It's just, well, I'm just screwing the car engine or uh, cleaning the, you know, rear view mirror or something like that. People do this, all these wonderful things when they go to a different context and this is the baseline of the glass. So for them, they shift the glass, go into the garage, feel fine and they're totally, you know, in the zen mode or something like that. They go like, wow, it's just, you know, my little engine, my little screwdriver. I feel really great about it. And then they go back into the house and they feel a lot better. The stress will creep on sooner or later, but for the time being, they feel really fine. And here's the trick though. So if these things people already can do, what I'm trying to teach people is the same thing, but instead of just this being on the outside, affecting the inside. 
you build a similar context inside yourself that then is then ex uh, expressed uh, externally or projected uh, external whatever language you like to use. People in the psychology world and especially Americans, you know, they are trained to think about projection. You know, you can you project your world on, on the outside, of it. it's not really true because you also have your own expression of stuff. So, but it's basically similar why we can you know, do things. And I, I just want to say that, you know, I have this kind of wheel that people just, you know, go through, they go into the process inside the context, you, you don't get anywhere. And people try to fix that context, you know, you go there and you try to fix it, willpower, change techniques, uh, self-help, healing, whatever. Instead, if you shift the context, whatever's going on in this kind of context does not follow along because it can't exist there can't exist. There. That's why, you know, you shift the context, you feel fine. And you can take someone who is really, you know, being upset, and two minutes later they're not upset. And like, if you're talking about, I'm posting on my Facebook, it's a book, uh, if you match whatever, if someone is upset, angry, uh, uh, irritated, frustrated, whatever, and you match your experience, whatever they're going through. In, in the example I was reading about, about was a guy who couldn't get a cell phone connection. So the guy behind him said, you know, can't get a self-connection there. No, I couldn't, can't, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's unbelievable. You, you're probably really frustrated about it. Yeah, go, yeah. And when someone acknowledged that you know, logically whatever is going on, the self-connection doesn't work, you tell them that, oh, the self-connection doesn't work, that sucks, right? And then you address the emotion they have about that, frustrated, anger, sad, disappointed, whatever. The, the, the other person go like, wow, this is someone understanding me. They don't understand you, they're just matching your emotions. Because when people are really upset, stuff like that, their emotions take precedence inside the glass. When they try to communicate to understand the world, it's not logical anymore, it's just pure raw emotion. Now when you start to understand the economic expression is to create inside yourself an internal glass, which you're then expressing on the outside world. You're just having a stable, no comparison economic experience of yourself now inside the kind of experience you want to have. Either it is, you know, to be content, to be, you know, satisfied, happy, um, zone flow, uh, all the time in the world, uh, whatever you call it, perfect day, yeah, whatever. And you can just, you know, run that kind of experience and have that kind of experience and it doesn't matter what context you're interacting with. Sooner or later, when people are interacting with you, you will take notice that they're trying to communicate in their own way, in their own glass, in their own way. But your glass is not resonating in the same way their glass is doing. So from, since re communication between human beings is, you know, what people say, oh, it's unconsciously, you know, I don't understand communication. Well, it's like, uh, crystal glass is resonating in a specific frequency and if you put the frequency real high the glass is shattering and here's the thing here with, with the glasses it's have their own frequency or resonance and this is how people communicate also if you're running your own experience and you keep that experience for a longer time other people glasses will resonate with that kind of you know frequency and sometimes you meet people who are just doing the same thing as you do in their own way and they are sitting there you know satisfied with you talking you know whatever engaging and stuff like that you know you are sitting there having your own experience with them and they have their own experience with you and you have a mutual understanding of the world and uh, either you agree or not agree with them, or they agree or not agree with you. doesn't matter And the thing here is, then you start to understand the world not from your point of view all, all the time, but you understand the world from the outside. Because what people thinking that they're responding to the world, the causality or cause effect, to whatever happens in the world, they still miss out on every pattern that happens there. How the, what kind of, uh, you know, when the sun points down, what kind of color the, the grass has, or the tree, because we, most people we generalize, oh, it's, uh, the trees are green, and huh? we're like, no, they're not. They're green, they're red, 
there are a little bit, uh, you know, dark shadowing in the trees, brings out, you know. There's a lot of stuff happening in the tree, you know. It's just, just grass. And I will show you what I'm watching at from the outside. That kind of a tree. Sorry about that. So it's just not, you know, a tree or grass, green. It's not just green, it's just shadowing. It's how the wind moves it. There's a ton of things going on. People go like, well, you sound like a, an artist, and people and I go like, well, you, I'm dancing, I'm singing, and I'm uh, kind of creative, so probably I'm an artist. You want to label things. Well, what kind of artist am I? And I'm an artist, I see things differently. Sure, but that's what every artist doing, they see the world and all, but anyway. The, your worldview is depending on what kind of glass you're running, or inside. So, once you have understanding of this is how your contextual reality is created, that you have no comparison, no comparison. This is how it is. But this is how you run well right now. You can then start altering it by directing your focus and attention to the future when it works. So you have the future when it works. You have the future when it works. Okay. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't work now or it does work now. I don't. I don't care. The future when it works. And so I was the question, what's the future like for me when it works? Well, it, then it's probably like that. What kind of experience do I want to have when I'm having this kind of future? What happens then? then? What kind of... Because when you start doing this, when we do it here, you start to having... Uh, we, can, we can call it a lack of duality that most people do when they have things that they're comparing all the time. Right? The outside world is impressing something, so they go like, oh, what's going on here? Oh and they react to the world. Instead, here you have this kind of external experience running while you get this information from the outside world. They go like, hmm, it matches the match, not to your experience, or you either go with the flow or with the experience you're having, or you, you might even shift your experience, or you will have a different experience than you plan to have that time. You plan to have a perfect day. First thing that happens is your car breaks, breaks down. And the next thing happens is that your kid uh, get hurt in school, you have to go to the doctor or the medical center, and your spouse is uh, diagnosed with cancer, and uh, you know, uh, NASA is announcing that a meteor is uh, coming to Earth and to destroy it. So you decide to have a perfect day, and you know, it seems like you know, the world is uh, conspiring against you to have a different life. You can still have your perfect time, whatever happens, happens. I mean, you can have this kind of causality running, or you can have you know, this kind of fate uh, stuff going on. It's no difference, actually, because people do this in religious uh, circles all the time, and they're content with life, because they have something, you know, that they do with this kind of structure. But they did this wonderful thing with, uh, you know, tied it to a Bible, tied it to a rule book. So they can't do anything else than the rule book and the Bible says, because if you do that, it's the devil's work, right? So then they're fucked inside that kind of contextual reality, and they, you know, what, what do you want I'm gonna, I wanna, I wanna go play poker. Well, that's the devil's work, you can't play poker. <laughs> and you can't go half naked or whatever it is in the world, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, that, that's kind of silly, but the thing here is, it's the same thing we're doing, Instead of, you know, be tied to a rule book, you tie to your own decisions and your own intention on your own focus so you can run what the fu whatever fucking experience you want to have, anytime. So instead of, you know, being tied to, oh, I must run it like, you know, oh, this kind of rule book, you don't have a rule book. You just have your own decided experience you want to run and tell me one. And then it becomes, you know, awesome, uh, legendary awesome, or uh, just, you know, plain awesome. You just have your own superb uh, experience. I was hitting, I was playing golf yesterday, I was, I'm dead tired today, so I'm just, you know, going slow today, in my way. And I had the caddy, my sister's kid, and it, that helped a lot. I was totally dead, exhausted. I was falling asleep on the couch when I got home, <clears throat> and I, I was really in bad shape. Anyway, that's yesterday. It doesn't affect me today, but anyway, I had this 
uh, hit a perfect 56 degree wedge and straight over the peel. But it was too far, so I was up on the you know hill and I had all downhill to the peel, and, and the flag stood, stood in like, and it's an impossible shot, basically. So I decided to hit the spot, and I hit the spot. Um, it just climbed down, and when it started hitting the green, it just rolled up to the pin high. And it was basically the best shot I did that day. It was a superb shot. And I said to Simon, that's a super shot. And it was a uh, super shot. Um, and that's kind of, you know, things I could do for a few years ago, because uh, what I'm been doing and been doing is applying this whatever you are behind and you can call it to my golf game so I'm playing better golf now I played yesterday a pretty decent game for uh, the technical level I have right now I couldn't shoot a low score but I was uh, it doesn't help when your brain doesn't work as you want it to work sadly and I still want to be a rock star you know singing and dancing on the stage and I have to do different things no, uh, stuff happens, and if I'm letting whatever I wanted to to be or have to stop me or to limit me, instead of you know changing my direction, do other things that I can still do the same things. Well, then I do that stuff. Now, if you're living in the, I don't know New York or uh, a rat hole in. Bungalunko or whatever place you're having internet and be able to watch on YouTube. The thing here is when you start to change your context inside here, inside your brain and your body, whatever has happened or has been true for you in your life will not come along if you do it the right way. Whatever, you know, fear or limitations, whatever you call it, worrying or emotional distress is not there anymore with you because you're you're running a different experience you're running a different context and in this new context all those things that have been uh, with you or true for you for uh, maybe a decade or two decades or 50 years I don't know I don't care they're not true anymore uh, I was I will tell you uh, when I got back back in 2004 my old mentor was having a tea drinking session with a friend yeah this friend had a smoking habit and the doctor has told him that you know you need to stop smoking or it's going on because he had a you know, cold in his lungs and all that stuff. so he asked me because he couldn't do so much so he asked me about it and so I said okay so I talked to, to this guy about 25 30 minutes something like that drink some tea drank some tea he didn't smoke, he didn't pick up his smokes. He had no desire at all to smoke at all. And after I was done, he went like, what the hell, I'm not smoking. And I go like, why? Well, I'm always smoking when I'm drinking tea, okay? So he had just an experience that, you know, contradict everything he had believed in and what he was doing. Because for him, drinking tea and smoking was uh, synonymous, it was the same thing. It was his class. So he had been able to talk to me in his own desired experience of the future that he didn't smoke anymore. And he had this kind of experience with it. And my mentors tried to explain what I was doing, but he couldn't. You know, he was sounding like a train, so he, obviously he didn't understand what I was doing. And, and the thing here is that I was talking about earlier that what I've been trying to understand is how can people have an experience but don't understand the experience that's going on. That's because they haven't shifted context yet. When you start to shift your context with your experience, you can have the same thing at the same time. Then there's no confusion, there is no misunderstanding, it's no, you know, you don't need to tell people metaphorical stories to, to make them, you know, whatever. You can just ask them directly, do you want to have this kind of experience? They go like, okay, what kind of context in reality is going on when you have this kind of experience? When the people start to be able to define that, they can run their own basic experience whenever they want because they understand this is the experience I want to have and fuck everything else. This, you know, you go like, you know, that's the power in your your own system that you go like, whoa, 
man, this is, you know, total. People are made mind blowing about that. And some people, you know, go like, you know, Ooh. and I, they can totally relax. I had this guy in the workshop, he was a really cool guy, I liked him. He's been, you know, he come from a wealthy family, he was uh, stressed out by going to school. And I asked him the first day in the workshop I was doing them and that uh, what, he, what he wanted. He wanted to be more, more motivated in school. And I said, I don't do that shit. And he go like, what? So I changed his, uh, listed his future when he, everything was working out. And it took about uh, 30 minutes, something like that. And when he was sitting down there, he was totally transformed. And I couldn't do, couldn't do anything else with him for the rest of, for a day and a half I was in the workshop. He, he came back to the next workshop and I put, asked him uh, and told him other people that I uh, what I would help him with. And I said, my calibration of the event that I couldn't do anything more because the system wouldn't be able to handle it. He said, yeah, that's true. That was a total, you know, shock for his system. But he still came back to the next workshop also because he had time to process whatever was going on. And he didn't have any more motivation in school. Sometimes people tell me, you know, how do I get motivated to exercise or how do I get motivated to, you know, do things I want to do? And I go like, well, you have to shift context because every, if you don't do that, you will run whatever experience or process your strategies and stuff like that you already do and you will quit. Sooner or later you will quit. You know, you start doing some exercises and you get motivated, you buy the stuff, you buy the shoes, go to the gym, get the car, you know, get aerobics class. Oh, if you're a guy, you go like, oh, wow, what, what a lot of babes there, and you go. But sooner or later, this is drifting off. You get, you get a hard time motivating yourself to get, go out to do the workout session again, or, uh, well, you know, you sit down watching TV or you get stuck in, before the computer or something like that. And that, that what happens with a lot of people. So, the, so obviously, people when they have this kind of you know experience and uh, kind of loop, they try to you know get motivated to do that. And that's a lot of work and it's a lot of pain to do that. So I ask the people. So whatever happens when you have reached a you know a outcome, what happens when you have you know lose the weight or when you have you know quit smoking, whatever it is, and they go like, what do you mean? What, what, why is it? What's, what's life like when you have you know reached you this kind of outcome? You go like I don't know, and I say okay, we'll just find out what it is. So we, we find out what, what kind of experience they have when they have reached the goal. They go like, well, then I'm able to you know buy new clothes, and I like shopping. They go like, yeah, I'm cool, yeah, yeah, because then I can go shopping and buy every any clothes I want because then it maybe you create a shopping uh, folder or uh, compulsion. I don't know. <laughs> But they go like that because they had no clue that they could do all those other things. <clears throat> and suddenly the motivation to get, you know, things going just happens. And then, you know, often the sports looking at them, what's going on? And they go like, yeah, I'm going to go exam again. And they go like, yeah, of course. Okay, it's kind of strange for them. But it keeps going on because they are, they are not motivated anymore. This is something they already have been doing to get wherever they want to go. And a lot of people have trouble with my approach because, you know, it seems so simplistic because it's, it is simplistic. And I don't want to do, you know, a hard and complicated or com transforming with language or symbolic metaphorical talk a lot. It's a glass. It's a contextual reality. Shift contextual reality, you shift your perception and your perception of all those. And you think about things differently, you resonate differently, you, you know, perceive the world differently and people think you're crazy or not here because you should respond differently and go like ah, I, don't, I don't care about that anymore. but it was so important it's like football or something like that you know I have judges and the referee you know the referee blows the people and you go like you get a yellow card and go like oh thank you the, the football player doesn't do that and I go why don't they do that because they're trying to you know convince the judge the referee that the referee was wrong and I'm going like it's really rare that they change their, you know, decision on the on the field. But this is how people expect the football player to, to behave. Everybody watching, you know, football on TV, and they, they see the football player run up to the referee and screaming at him. Sure, you know. So the young players, you know, they, they do the same thing in the, in the small tournament. I've seen that. They scream, oh, fuck the referee, fuck him, he's young. 
And I go like, you know, that's kind of a weird behavior. And I go like, why do they do that? Well, you have to do that because that's how football is played. And I go like, I don't play football that way. I play it in the fun way and uh, in a perfect way. And I go like, you can't do that because it's, you know, you know. And you can be in the wheel, turning the wheels, and just bounce back between those glasses and, you know, get nowhere, try to climb the ladder of them and falling down again because you have to turn the glass upside down. You have to turn your world up to, to shift context and whatever context you are running right now, you can have a future context and add to whatever you want it to be when it works for you and you have the result and you have that kind of experience when you're doing that. You can listen to you have that kind of experience today. And the thing is then, then you're not motivated anymore because you already know what's going to be like having that kind of you know, things going on in your life. Right? So you automatically start to do things to get there. You don't need to be motivated anymore because this is how you live your life. This is the way of life you have now. And it doesn't matter if you're living uh, as I said, in a rat cellar or something like that, you're a shitty life or whatever it is. It doesn't matter anymore. Because you then have a direction, destiny, whatever you call it, desire, uh, karma, whatever you call it. Then you have something you're going for. And that's the real wheel of fortune when you can get that kind of experience that protects your reality. Because then you really understand the power of the system. Nothing is bad. And that's my friends on legendary awesomeness from me, Robert, today. And it's uh, sunny, warm, summer day, it's not too sweet. And I'm still drinking my coffee today. And since my glass is getting empty, I'm going to quit now and, uh, well, catch you later another time on YouTube.